Jesus is not gold. Often have you heard that told. Many a man his life is so fair you will. But my outside to behold, gilded tombs do worms in fold. Had you been as wise as bold, fare you well. Young in limbs, in judgment old, your answer had not been in the scroll. Fare you well, your suit is cold, fare you well. Is not gold. Often have heard that told. Many a man, his life is so fair. You well, fair you well, fair you well, fair you well, fair you well. Music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. Oh, oh, that strain again. It had a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough! No more. Tis not so sweet now as it was before. <laughs> Tis not so sweet now as it was before. Yes, and we've never heard that song before, have we, Jason? <laughs> no, come back, come back. I have something just for you. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that notwithstanding thy capacity, receiveth as the sea, naught enters there of what validity and pitch so air, but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. <laughs> That's Jason Betty. This is the Shakespeare's Fool Band. We are delighted to have you here. Thank you for coming. Very good, John. Do you know, do you know what that speech means? I have no idea. I just memorized the lines in Shakespeare. I said them. I was kind of hoping for help from Jason. Obviously, I wasn't going to get any. That's the opening speech from Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, which is the only play that has a second title. It's called Twelfth Night or What You Will. And that opening speech of Orsino's is kind of a, well, make of this what you will. So full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Okay, well, he's in a long, unrequited love affair. So he's decided to fall in love with the concept of love since she's always around. But we are so glad to have you guys here. Again, I have to introduce the band. Jason Betty behind me. Mark Peterson is Jason. He wrote all, this, all the music you hear is original. He wrote original music. The lyrics you're hearing are Shakespeare's. We are delighted to have once again Mr. Alan Deramo on stand up bass. And Brian Head on drums. So if music be the food of love, let's play on. Mistress man, where are you roaming? Staying here, your true love's coming. We sit both high and low. Tripping no further, pretty sweet. And journeys end in lovers' meeting. Every wise 
Mistress Manson doth blow. Mistress mine, Mistress mine, Bling not your fruit, Die on the vine. I want a drink, Cup divine, Mistress mine. Oh, what is love, tis not hereafter. Present mirth is present laughter. Every wild mouth and little love. In delay, the lies no plenty. Oh, come kiss me, sweet and twenty. What's the will of India? Oh, mistress mine, mistress mine. Let not your fruit die on the vine. I want a drink. Mistress mine, oh mistress mine, where are you roaming? Staying here, true love's coming, and we'll sing both high and low. Should no further bring his sweeting, journey's end in a lover's meeting, every wise man son doth know. Oh, mistress mine, mistress mine. Mistress mine, oh mistress mine. Thank you very much so much for coming out here tonight. So many of you looking so. So many of you. Yeah. Thanks for coming to this pantomime. One more time, this is the last show. Happy and sad. Happy and sad. And um, it was made me think about this on the way here. I was thinking about John's next speech. Imagine a small town, let's say in by the ocean somewhere, where a small group of performers get together for the sole purpose of stealing from the audience. And they distract the audience with some sort of puppetry, some second rate, stolen, unoriginal material. And meanwhile, somebody goes around and pickpockets everybody. And that's kind of the theme of uh, John's next speech. Did I do that right, John? Pretty much. Pretty much. So not, good. then not then. And um, I decided to, in a nod to Ava, and because we don't have a ring layer, and because this is a villainous character, I'm gonna wear my dark glasses. And I look like one of the band members. I feel so cool. This character, Autolycus, he sells worthless junk, half of which he's stolen, and he brings people to him. And then his clown starts mimicking a song that another woman's playing, and the clown is paying so much attention to it that Autolycus has noticed whose purses are best in picture. And while they're staring at this stupid, inane song, He's stealing all their persons. You'll hear the word placket. That means he can reach his hand right into this, a slit or pocket of a woman's dress, and she doesn't even feel it. He also says, "'Twas nothing to gild a cod piece of a purse." That's where the men kept their coins. That's where it was. So if you don't feel that, you know that you're not paying attention. So this is autologous. Ha, ha. What a fool honesty. And trust his sworn brother, a very simple gentleman. I have sold all my trumpery, not a counterfeit stone, not a ribbon, glass, pometer, knife, tape, glove, brooch, table book, ballad, shoe tie, bracelet, horn ring to keep my pack from fasting. They throng who should buy first, as if my trinkets had been hallowed and brought a benediction to the buyer. By which means I saw whose purse was best in picture, and what I saw to my good use, I remembered. My clown, who wants but something to be a reasonable man, grew so in love with the wench's song that he would not stir his potatoes till he had both tune and wort, which so drew the rest of the crowd to me 
that all their other senses stuck in ears. I might have pinched a placket. Twas nothing to gild a codpiece of a purse. I would have filed keys off that hung in chains. No hearing, no feeling, but my sir's song, and admiring the nothing of it. So that in this time of lethargy, I picked and cut most of their festival purses, and had not the old man come in with a hoobub against his daughter and the king's son, and scared my chaffs from the chaff, I had not left a purse alive in the whole army. Now, I think this, I love this next song. I love, I love all the music that Jason's done on the band and with Alan and, and, uh, and, uh, and Brian. It's so fantastic. Jason took the, this song from Shakespeare's play, Love's Labor's Lost. There's a short little section in the lyrics, uh, Queen of Queens, and I love it. He's titled it Queen of Queens. It's a beautiful, beautiful song, so please enjoy
No thought can think Mortal Of Mortal Town Queen of Queens Queen of Queens Oh, Queen of Queens Queen of Queens stage and screen. And she's my queen of queens. Oh, isn't that nice? We've run out of jokes. We've been doing this four weeks. I've got nothing funny to say. So you said something nice. Uh, Finally. Uh, Ava Burton, everybody. Sky of, up there, uh -huh. that's the sun. Yeah. That's <laughs> She's from Britain. I'm, I'm, trying I'm trying to show her around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go straight to the dark side now, thank you, Jason. Stop making fun. Um, and bring you my Lady Macbeth. She, um, she has talked Macbeth into killing the king. So they can realise their ambition of being on the throne. And Macbeth agrees. He doesn't really have much choice. But he agrees in the end. But he goes away. And he comes back. And he says, I can't do it. I can't do it. And Lady Macbeth gets really mad. As only Lady Macbeth can. Not least of all because she knows she's got to talk him back into it again. And this is what she says. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since and wakes it now to look so green and pale what it did so freely? From this time such I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valour as thou art in desire? What thou have, that which thou esteemest the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon thy wood, like the poor cat in the adage. What beast wast thou that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does only make you. I have given suck. And I know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while he was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gum and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. Your courage to the sticking place and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather his day's hard journey shall soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will either whine and wassail so convinced that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a few, and the receipt of reason a limbeck only. When in swinish sleep their dren drenched natures liars in the death, what cannot you and I perform? Not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our.